All right, so in this series of videos, I'm going to be reviewing the uh, recent assessment done, looking at the topics of interference and wave particle duality. In this video, I'm looking at question one, and I'll break each question into a separate video. So let's get started. So um, Thomas Young, 200 years ago, just demonstrate interference of light by using a double slit um, eliminated from a single source and producing interference pattern. So in terms of what this suggested, um, it basically told Thomas Young that light was a wave. So interference is specifically a wave prop uh, property, so particles can't um, interfere with each other. So it essentially indicated that light was a wave. Um, so you can do it with a laser, which is called a monochromatic source of light. So monochromatic means... Um, essentially you've got a source that produces um, a single um, a single wavelength so it's not just the fact it's one, one colour if you go back to um, look at it from the Latin chroma means um, colour but this actually means one wavelength So in terms of what is meant by coherent, um, you're essentially talking about multiple sources of light, so two or more sources, and it's to do with the need to have a fixed phase difference to reduce interference pattern. So essentially you need a fixed um, phase difference between the light, so it doesn't matter what it is, it doesn't have to be in phase, it doesn't have to be out of phase, it could be anything, but it has to be a fixed um, phase difference. Okay, so um, then looking at in terms of the risks and safety precautions, uh, the risk is uh, retina damage. So if you look at a laser, you're um, da essentially doing damage to the retina in your eye. So um, you might want to uh, wear protective goggles or um, point it away from where people's eyes are. Some uh, strategy essentially to ensure nobody looks directly at the laser beam. Alright, so we've got now got a diagram of an interference project pattern produced by a double slit. And we've got slit spacing of 0 0.30, a distance from the slits to the screen of 10, and we want to calculate the wavelength. So this is your double slit equation, so lambda d over s. So if we want to calculate wavelength, we'll need a rearrangement of that, so it'll be w s over d. And first thing we need to calculate w, so to do 1, 2, 3, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight spacings takes 0 0.6. So we're going to divide this value into eight and we'd get 0 0.02 uh, meters. So putting that back in there, we get 0 0.02 times by the slit spacing, so 0 0.30 times 10 to the minus 4 to convert it into meters. And then divide that by 10 and we get a value of 6.0 times yeah, I don't want to write, times 10 to the minus 7 meters because it's a wavelength. Okay, and that would be your final wavelength there. And so last thing, so the laser is replaced by another laser emitting visible light with a shorter wavelength. So shorter wavelengths uh, are typically blue, so those are the shorter wavelengths. So in terms of state and explain how this will affect the spacing. So got this equation like this. So first let's look at what stays the same. So the disc screen distance stays the same, the slit spacing stays the same. So what we can take from this is that the spacing is directly proportional to the wavelength. 
So in terms of then stating what that means, so increasing lambda is going to cause the spacing to increase, or in this case, because we're looking at shorter, decreasing lambda is going to cause the spacing to decrease. So it's this one you'd need to talk about because it's asked about specifically about shorter wavelengths. So in terms of stating what happens, you get a smaller spacing, and the reason why is because the spacing is directly proportional to the wavelength, because these two things are constant. So that concludes the first question, looking at double slits. In the next video, we'll move on to look at a diffraction grating question.